Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 884. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 884, click on the link below the video. Wow, in this video we have a wild one. Here is a tabular table. We have row headers and column headers and then some numbers in between. And here's what we want to do. We want to start with a blank template. And if we put a name here, we want it to show up here. And then the next name, show up there. So we want those to show up, and then any numbers, oops, any numbers we put here, we want in essence to do a two-way lookup and find out which numbers are entered and get the row header, column header, and list it in essence as a true data set, right? This is a particular record. Anywhere we go, we want those records uh, extracted. So here we're going to the, the trigger for us to extract a record is that numbers are in this two-way table, meaning columns and rows. And then it needs to extract the column header, put it here. Sorry, that's the row header, put it here. The column header, put it here, and then the number. All right, so let's see how to do this. And there are sheets. We're going to see how to do it in 2007. We'll see an amendment for 2010 and then uh, amendment for 2003. Now the first thing is, as we enter stuff here, we want it to show up here. I'm going to highlight the range. And in that active cell, I'm going to use the transpose function. This is an array function. If I highlight a range, this is one column, four rows. That means I need to highlight four columns, one row it transposes the data. Now you have to enter. This is a, an array function, so you hold Control, Shift, and Enter. Now I don't want those zeros to show up. I don't want anything to show up until I type data here as the row headers. I'm going to hit F2, and I'm going to copy that range. And then I'm going to say if anything in that range is equal to double quote, which is blank, then I want to see a double quote. Otherwise, Control V, I want whatever's in that range. Close parentheses now, Control Shift and Enter. Now if I enter so they're showing up over there, that's just what we want. Now let's put some numbers here wherever they are. And the idea is we're going to have this template here, fill out this and then put our numbers and we need to extract uh, the proper records. Now, we were going to have one, two, three formulas, one to extract the row headers, one to extract the column headers, and the one to extract the uh, numbers inside the table here. So we'll do, in the fir first two formulas, we'll use first two formulas, we'll use the index function. Index function needs the values to look up. I'm going to look up those, F4, comma. Now, here's the trick. When we copy this down, it needs to know to look at the first record, find a 3 and a 4, which means please repeat FAM twice. When we get down to the third and fourth row, it needs to find this number and this number and list Lynn. Here, it finds just a single number, so it lists Sue just once. In essence, this is the type of reverse lookup, right? We're looking in the guts of the table and then returning the column header, right? Usually we look up something, VLOOKUP in the first column and return it here, or two-way lookup, we have column header and row header. No problem. We're going to use the small function because we're eventually going to get row numbers. And notice what's going to happen for FAM. FAM is the first item in this blue range here, so we need 1, 1. And then when we get to Lynn, we need the row numbers 2, 2, 3, and then 4. So I'm going to have a bunch of row numbers, so I'm going to use the small to extract row numbers as I copy down. The first criteria, I need to say, hey, F4, anything in that rectangular range, not less than, greater than, double quote. Anytime it's not empty, then what do I want? Well, I need a row number, because the index needs a row number. Now, row, I'm going to highlight the whole entire rectangular range, and then hit F4. Now, what it would do right now is it would list uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Actually, if you highlight this and hit the uh, Actually, that's not two. It'll list two, three, four, five. 
So if I hit the F9, notice it just lists, you know, you think it lists the whole rectangular, but no, it lists just those. From that, I really want 1, 2, 3, 4, so I'm going to subtract row F4. That's going to give me a 0, so I need to add 1 back in. Now, here's the cool thing. Right now, if we were to highlight this, right, and hit F9, we get 1, 2, 3, 4. But if we do this whole if, it's going to return false, 1, 1, false, which is what we need. We need to have the row number 1, 1 listed, so index knows to extract fam twice. All right, and then as we copy it down, I'll get the 1, 1s and the 2s and then the 3s. All right, uh, comma, and the small needs a K that says which first, second, third do we want to extract, so I'm going to use the rows function. I'm sitting in A7. A dollar sign seven, lock that row reference. All right, so there's the K. I'm going to close that off. There's the small. There's the uh, row number. The small will deliver row numbers as it goes down. This is an array. We have array operations inside the if, so control shift and enter. You can see the curly brackets up there. I did something wrong. What is that? right there. All right, control shift and enter. I'm uh, there's 16 possibilities inside the table, so I'm going to copy it down 16 rows. That num, I'm going to in 2007 just use if error. We'll see a great alternative to this uh, on the 2003 sheet. Cuz uh, if error only hap exists in 2007 and later. Control Shift Enter and then double click and send it down. Now we're going to extract the uh, column headers up here. Again, for fam, we're going to need Lin and Sue. Well, we're actually going to use a similar trick, except for we're going to, instead of row, we'll use column. But we will see a problem and then we'll figure out a way to get around it. Index, I want to extract these column headers, F4, comma, small, if. Anything in here, F4 is not blank. Then what do I want? Let's just try the column and see what we get. Column of all of these, F4, minus column of that one, F4, plus 1. Now let's close this off and hit the F9 key, right? It should be giving us column numbers wherever there's not blanks. And I'm going to hit the... Uh, F9 key. Now notice 2, 4, I mean 2, 3 right there. That's perfect for fam. But what happens with small? It's going to look at the 1, which is right here. Even though it's further through our array, small will pick it out first. So then it would deliver a fam here, which is not what we want. We don't want fam, fam. We want fam, lin. No problem. I'm going to get rid of all the other ones except for the 2 and 3. Control Z. I'm going to add an extra condition right here. If anything in this range right here, F4 equals that, relative cell reference, comma. And then I'm going to put an extra parenthesis on the end. In essence, what this is going to do, I'm going to say, is fam equal to any of this, um, it'll be only true there, so the, a big array will only show the 3 and 4. F9. So there we go. Uh, t I'm sorry, the 2 and 3. All else are false. As we get down to the second fam, and then we go to Lin, then it will show different column numbers there. Control Z. Now you would think, comma, for the K, we could just use rows, but we're going to get into trouble if we do that. I'll show you what we'll do. B dollar sign seven. All right, so we close that off. We close off the small. We close off the index. Control Shift Enter, and then copy it down. Now what's happening here is the row is giving me one, two, three, four, five, and that's not what we want. Really, for uh, this sequence, we want one. Two. Remember, because when we added this extra criteria of fam, it only showed three, four, right? When it gets down here, it needs one again, and then two, and then one, and then one. So instead of rows, we'll use count if. So 
So we'll go that colon comma this. Now what is happening here is we want an expandable range, so I'm going to hit F4. That means as we copy this down, that little range will expand. Right now it sees one fan, then it will see two. And then down here, because the criteria is a relative cell reference, it'll count one lin. Control Shift Enter, double click and send it down. All right, and so that will work there. If error. comma, double quote, control, shift, enter, double click and send it down. So it looks like that's working. Finally, we want the actual number. Now it's just a straight two-way lookup. Here's the inside of the table. One, two criteria, fam, lin, boom. Now we could use index match match, but I'm going to use VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP, I'm going to look up fam, comma, within this right here, F4. That first column will find the row number comma, and I just need to give it a column, so I'm going to use match, and look up that comma within this. Now be careful, I want to make sure and highlight that extra cell right there, so because the VLOOKUP starts with 1, 2, 3, F4, comma, 0, because they're not sorted. That's the match, 0. Now we have the column index, which is the match is delivering, comma, lookup range. I'm definitely going to need a 0 close parentheses, Control-Enter, no uh, Control-Shift-Enter required there. So there we extracted our numbers. And then we do the same if error. We could actually, uh, once we get to here, anyway, if error is fine. But you actually, we already have established a uh, blank over here. So I could say if that's equal to blank, then VLOOKUP. Uh, I'm sorry, if that's equal to blank, that means it's down here. Double quote. Double quote is actually a null text string. We always say blank or empty, but it's actually a null text string. All right. So when it sees that, I'll put a blank. Otherwise, V look up. No control shift enter, but I double click and send it down. So now, if I enter a new number here, it adjusts down. We have fam, 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 lim, fam, sue. That's correct. We got our right numbers. If we delete it all and then start new, so there we have that working. I'm going to control Z, 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 leave that data set there. Now, this formula right here in requires control shift enter. If you're in 2010, there's a great alternative. The, instead of using the small, you use the aggregate. The aggregate is a function that has lots of different functions, and one of them is small. But the aggregate does not require Control shift enter So I'm going to come over here. I already have all my formulas here. I'm just going to do this one. Now, if you know how to do small, if that construction, it's easy to flip, flip over and figure out how to do the aggregate. We have one condition. Now I'm going to control CC to open up my uh, clipboard. I'm going to copy that again. That's one condition. And then not the if, just the actual array and the operator there. Second one, I'm going to control C. Here's the actual numbers we need to dump into small, control C. And here's the K for small copy. So I've copied those there. I'm going to highlight and type aggregate. I love aggregate. 15 is the function number for small. We want to say 6, which is ignore errors, because we're going to get a divide by 0 error, error. This array, the thing I need to dump into small is the columns. Now, actually, I want to be careful and put parentheses around it. And then I'm inside right there. All right, so those are the numbers I want. And I'm going to divide them by a series of trues and falses, or ones and zeros. So I'm going to put divide and then open parentheses, open parentheses. The fir first condition, close parentheses times open parentheses. Second condition, close parentheses. So now I should have this little piece right here. And actually, if you highlight all of the columns and that, is that too many? No, that's it right there. And hit F9. You see it's got the row numbers. And divide by 0. The 6 will avoid the divide by 0. 
the 15 will extract as we go down 2 and then 3. Control Z. I still need the K comma, and that's the count if. All right. I think I then have the aggregate. I just need to close that off. And I think if I control shift enter, oops, no, I, I don't need to control shift enter. I forgot something here. Let me backspace. OK, so there we have our K, close parentheses. I missed a parenthesis somewhere, close parentheses on the row number. And then comma, double quote. I'm watching these screen tips, close parentheses. And then I don't need control shift enter, just control enter. Double click and send it down. All right, and so then that, that one also has the aggregate, and this one just uh, has if error. It's just a great way to go. You don't have to remember to do Control Shift Enter. Uh, and finally, for 2003, instead of doing if error, how about just if rows are greater than count? So the trick, since the numbers are the triggers, right? I'm counting. As soon as I get past the count, it will show a blank. And otherwise, it runs that index. And then in the subsequent columns, you can just say, is the thing there equal to blank? All right, uh, that was a wild one. How to extract from, a, in essence, a tabular with row headers and column headers table. How to, in some ways, unwind it, do a reverse lookup, and list all the actual uh, transactions. All right, see you next trick.